This is the greatest, fastest moving downward pressure I've ever seen. The subprime foreclosure crisis, the economic downturn, the lack of mortgage money has begun to unravel neighborhoods. The greatest danger to neighborhoods today is vacant houses. They get vandalized, sometimes squatters move in, they become places to hide drugs and sell drugs. Uh, some of them catch on fire. They all lose value. And they're a menace to, to urban neighborhoods, especially the vulnerable ones. This problem of foreclosure in our neighborhoods is bigger than any one organization has the resources to address. Okay, how's everyone doing? Everyone's good? Welcome to the monthly meeting for the Newark Essex Foreclosure Task Force. I hope everyone is doing well and doing this. The Newark Essex Foreclosure Task Force is a coalition of around 40 organizations that came together in the fall of 2007 to try to confront the growing foreclosure problem in our area. Okay, so the mediation program, they gave some numbers for that. All the organizations that were starting to see the foreclosure rate rise and see that as a problem for the clients that they served and in their work came together to share strategy and, and to try to put together programs that would help both the people and the neighborhoods. I also am going to pass out the new law that President Obama signed into effect. The work that everyone did together through the Foreclosure Task Force really built some groundwork for us to collaborate on the Neighborhood Stabilization Program when it was announced. The NSP2 program is a competitive grant program where the federal government's providing money to localities to buy and fix abandoned and foreclosed homes. All right, so if we could just go around the room and just do quick introductions and then... We'll so we, we went through this intensive grant application process together that I really think was enabled by the fact that we had relationships built through the foreclosure task force and we were successful in obtaining a grant for a little over $20 million. Krishna Garlic from Brand New Day in Elizabeth. Ali Reese from La Casa de Don Pedro here in Newark. Through our NSP2 consortium application, uh, HANDS, Brand New Day, La Casa, and 15 other organizations are coming together to address around 250 units of housing in these five towns. When we initially started talking to the mayor, we really said, you know, what area in the city um, do you feel like we could have the most impact around affordable housing development, around community change? And he said, oh, without a doubt, the East Ward. And so we came through here, had a tour, and I think we were all blown away by the number of deteriorated buildings, mm -hmm. the number of vacant lots, mm -hmm. the number of foreclosed properties. I mean, it's really overwhelming. So our partnerships with community development corporations are crucial. First of all, they know the neighborhoods, they have a strong history and connection with particular neighborhoods, and they're able to mobilize the community in support of the stabilization efforts. Uh, and also they have the ability to do some of the construction and rehab work that the city government doesn't have the ability to do. So we have a real opportunity to take what has been an unfortunate situation for a lot of the residents here in the neighborhood and really create a wonderful opportunity for new housing, uh, for sale and rental housing, as well as to identify what are other needs as far as commercial development and services and recreation and really put together a beautiful new neighborhood. I think it's just going to be such an impact to have the brick-fronted homes um, all here in this concentrated area. We're developing a neighborhood, but what we want to develop is a neighborhood of choice mm -hmm. so that people are really choosing to live here uh, and not having to live here because they're poor or because sure. they don't have a choice to live somewhere else, but that they're here because they want to be. Right. So we're hoping that through the NSP funds that we are really concentrating on a small enough area in the neighborhood where you will really be able to see community change. So we've taken an area that has been blighted and abandoned and been able to work with the township to acquire these 11 lots where we're building these new homes. And then through NSP2 funds, we're expanding out from those 11 lots to really be able to build around you know, that foundation. Part of our NSP2 project is this donated property. This is abandoned property. And uh, we're going to build two two-family homes on these two sites here. 
The exciting thing is that you have so many properties that are available for redevelopment. So when you talk about being able to create a visual change, that people can drive into this neighborhood and see the impact of you building 11 homes, of you building you know, another additional nine two-family houses, of you building a community neighborhood park. They're gonna be able to drive through and see that this is a different neighborhood. We'd been gathering all the foreclosure filings so that we could see what was going on in terms of where the crisis was the worst in Newark. So I don't know if you can see, there's a boarded uphill a house with another one where the siding's been stripped and a fire. I think the more valuable components of the task force meetings is a regular sharing of data. We have a close relationship with a professor at Rutgers University that's been tracking this for years and her uh, studies have allowed us to develop a pretty detailed picture of how foreclosure is affecting the neighborhoods. What are the rates? How are they changing? What types of trends are we seeing with the different lenders? That's been a basis of information that's allowed everybody to work in a much more informed way than we would be working independently. We've been able to take all of the individual things that we've seen and add them up and then look at them across the city to say, here's where things are concentrated, here's where they aren't, here's where the problem is really bad, and give folks a sense of standing and looking from afar. So if you're a nonprofit, you're standing and you're looking in a board of a building and you're wondering why it's boarded. Was it in foreclosure? Did the people leave? You know, what, what is the story behind it? The impact of one or two or three, you know, vacant and foreclosed properties can, can really be substantial. Were those foreclosures, do you know? It had to be foreclosed because everybody walked away and left. Do you remember the, the old know. owner? I don't even know and it certainly makes everybody on that block wonder, well, does two or three vacant houses mean that soon there'll be five or six? And if there's five or six, it's like the end is just around the corner. I've worked on lots of blocks, yes, Lord. lots of city blocks, I yeah. tell you, a ton of them. Mm -hmm. And every time, Mr. Yeah. Bostic, there's somebody like you yeah. mm -hmm. and other right. neighbors who feel the same way, yes. then the place holds together. Sure. And when the work that Hans is doing, it's not just about buying abandoned houses and, and rehabilitating them. It's about seeing if we can change neighborhood momentum. Mm -hmm. And so that's 117, Alice. Mm -hmm. That's we bought the mortgage and mm -hmm. that, now we have clear title to the property. We try to be really selective and get the pivotal properties so that private investment can follow us. You know, this, this is, when we bought this mortgage, this was one of the 47 mortgages that was part of the NJ Affordable Homes scam. Operation Neighborhood Recovery is the name we gave to this transaction where we bought the defaulted mortgages on 47 troubled properties in urban Essex County. But we knew we couldn't do it alone. We reached out to other community development corporations. We said, listen, we're going to have these properties. Some of them are in your neighborhoods. Are you interested in redeveloping them once we get clear title? They said they were. They would rehabilitate them and sell them or rent them in their own neighborhoods. The good news is we were awarded $22.7 million of NSP2 subsidies for us to use across the neighborhoods of urban Essex County. As part of our work on neighborhood stabilization, we're purchasing this house from hands. We'll be rehabbing it and uh, helping a, a new homeowner purchase it. It'll have uh, a homeowner's unit and two uh, affordable rental units as well. The major change is we're going to be adding the, the historic porch back on. La Casa Don Pedro is a 38-year-old community organization. Mandándole al banco de los ingresos. We're a full-scale social service agency. Por cuánto compró la casa? Cuánto le costó? Eh, 580. 580. Sí. ¿Y en qué ciudad vive usted? New Jersey. We're doing uh, on the stairs in the front. And then we have our community and economic development division, and that's the division that I am the director of. We redevelop affordable housing. We build new affordable housing. We are then packing in a lot of modern accessories. There are children walking through here all the time. They don't need to have derelict buildings. They don't need to have places where more litter and decay happens. And there's the whole broken window theory. One house on the block that has a broken window or has some kind of issue starts to lead to other ones. People stop caring about that block because they see it as a block that's in decay. 
We don't want to have blocks that are in decay. We want to have blocks that are, are healthy. And, and up and down this block is actually relatively healthy. So here is our latest development of affordable housing. La Casa has been here for 38 years. We are invested in this community, making sure that it's safe and stable. This is a great example of what happened in this neighborhood when for-profit developers came in, built new homes, and sold them at increasingly higher prices and uh, at unsustainable mortgages for families that came in and purchased. We've invested so much through our planning and through our, our development, we're not going to watch uh, the clock be turned back on the work that we've done here. The task force and the NSP program are giving us the tools that we need to start to stabilize the situation. The really hopeful part though I think is that we are building relationships that will give us the strength we'll need to face the next crisis. When you have a national problem you've got to attack it at the grassroots. And when we stand together we will not only tackle this problem but I believe in the coming months and years, we're going to be able to, right here in New Jersey, show this nation what's possible when good people come together. A friend of mine said to me, a, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. Well, I don't think we're wasting this crisis. In fact, I think in this crisis, we're building something that is really durable and will really serve community development and the urban neighborhoods of, of greater Newark for years and years to come.